Narada said, O Creator, O Brahma the fortunate, you are blessed, O foremost among devas. A wonderfully sanctifying story of Shiva has been narrated by you today. I have heard the wonderfully divine story of the origin of the Linga, the auspicious hearing of the efficacy of which destroys all miseries here. Please narrate what transpired thereafter, the grandeur of the created things, and particularly the mode of creation. Brahma said, You have requested very pertinently. I shall briefly narrate what transpired later, as I have heard before. When the eternal Lord Shiva vanished, O chief of the Brahmanas, Vishnu and I, in a very happy mood, withdrew our forms of swan and boar, and wished for creation and sustenance of the worlds. Narada said, O Vidhi, O Brahma, O wise one, I have a great doubt. Please remove the same. How is it that both of you assumed the form of swan and boar instead of other forms? Please tell me the reason for the same. Sutta said, On hearing these words of the noble-souled Narada, Brahma spoke after remembering the lotus-like feet of Shiva. Brahma said, The swan has the power of going up steadily. It has the power of discriminating between the real and the unreal, as in separating milk from water. The swan understands the distinction between ignorance and knowledge. Hence, I, Brahma the Creator, assumed the form of swan. O oh, Narada, but I failed to cognize the refulgent form of Shiva, and therefore could not exercise my power of discrimination. How can real knowledge dawn on one who is engaged in activities of creation? Hence, though in the form of swan, I could not attain the power of discrimination. A boar has the power of steadily going deep below. Hence, Vishnu, the wanderer in the forest, assumed the form of the boar. Or Vishnu, the protector of all the worlds, assumed the form of a boar to start a new kalpa, eon. Since the day he assumed the form of a boar, the eon by the title of Varaha has started. Or the Varaha Kalpa can be considered to have started since the day we two decided to assume these forms. O Narda, thus I have answered your relevant question. O sage, now listen. I shall resume the context. Remembering the lotus-like feet of Shiva, I shall explain to you the mode of creation. When God Shiva vanished, I, Pitamaha, grandfather of the worlds, fell into contemplation, pondering on the means of carrying out his words of direction. Then, after bowing down to Shiva, getting knowledge from Vishnu and attaining the highest bliss, I decided to start the work of creation. After bowing to Shiva and instructing me, O oh dear one, Vishnu too vanished. After getting the blessings of Shiva and going out of the cosmic egg, Vishnu made Vaikuntha his permanent abode. Desiring to create, I remembered Shiva and Vishnu. In the waters that had already been created, I offered handfuls of water as libation. Then the cosmic egg arose, consisting of twenty-four tattvas, cosmic principles. O Brahmana, then a splendid huge form, Virat, appeared, and the form of waters was not seen. Confusion arose in my mind, and I performed a severe penance for twelve years, meditating on Vishnu. At that time, Vishnu appeared before me, and touching my body lovingly and joyously, he told me. Vishnu said, O Brahma, thanks to the favor of Shiva, I am capable of giving you everything. There is nothing which cannot be given to you. I am delighted. Tell me the boon you wish to have. Brahma said, O Vishnu, O fortunate one, I have been entrusted to you by Shiva. 
Hence it is but proper that I should request you. Please give me who request you what he has told you to give me. Obeisance be to you. This Virat form of the cosmic egg consists of 24 tattvas. It is insentient. O Vishnu, you have now appeared before me thanks to the blessings of Shiva. Confer sentience on this cosmic egg originating from Shiva's power. When I said this, the great Vishnu, adhering strictly to the directives of Shiva, assumed infinite forms and entered the cosmic egg. Vishnu, with a thousand heads, a thousand eyes, and a thousand feet, encompassed the cosmic egg, touching the earth everywhere. When Vishnu, who was properly eulogized by me, entered it, the cosmic egg, consisting of the twenty-four tattvas, became sentient. Vishnu shone as the great being, the lord of the seven worlds beginning with Patala. The five-faced Lord Shiva created for his residence the beautiful city of Kailash that shone above all. O celestial sage, Kailash and Vaikuntha will never be destroyed, even if the whole cosmic egg is destroyed. O foremost among sages, I am saying in Satyaloka, O dear one, I desired the activity of creation at the bidding of Shiva. Even as I stood desirous of creation, the evil creation, the set of five illusions, appeared before me. It was of the nature of darkness, endowed with knowledge. Then I created the chief creation consisting of immobile beings with a delightful mind. At the bidding of Shiva, I continued my meditation in a detached spirit. While creating it, I had thought it would be an aspirant after the Atman. But the creation, Tiryakshrotas, turned out to be full of misery, and it was not an aspirant. Realizing that it was not an aspirant, I began to ponder over the matter. Then the Sattvika Sarga, otherwise known as Urdvashrotas and Deva Sarga, divine creation, took shape. It was really charming. But considering that it too was not an aspirant, I meditated on my Lord. Then the Rajasa Sarga, otherwise known as Arvakshrotas, the human creation which was a great aspirant, appeared at the bidding of Lord Shiva. Then again at the bidding of Lord Shiva, the Bhutadika Sarga, creation of the elements, etc., appeared. Thus five types of creation, collectively called Vaikrita, were set in motion by me. Brahma evolved three types of creation from Prakriti. The first one was the creation of Mahat, the cosmic principle of intellect. The second was that of the subtle elements. The third was Vaikarika, of the nature of transformations and ramifications. Thus, with five Vaikrita types and three later Prakritas, there were eight types of creation. The Kaumara Sarga was the ninth. It was both Prakrita and Vaikrita. I cannot adequately describe the divisions and subdivisions of all these types of creation. Last of all, I shall mention the Brahminical creation, which is of very little utility. It is here that the great creation of Sanaka and others, the Kaumara Sarga, took shape. Sanaka and others, my mental sons, were five in number. They were all on a par with Brahman, of good rights and averse to worldly attachment. Despite my command, they were not inclined to carry on the activities of creation. These scholarly sons turned their attention from worldly activities and were devoted to the exclusive meditation on Shiva. O oh, Narada, they were bold enough to retort to me, whereat I became very furious and nearly senseless. When I became nearly unconscious on account of excessive fury and agitation, drops of tears fell from my eyes. At that time, on being mentally meditated upon, Vishnu came there hurriedly and enlightened me. O foremost among sages, I was instructed by Vishnu to perform the penance of Shiva. Accordingly, I performed a severe penance. 
While I was performing penance for creation, the merciful Lord Shiva of Trinity came out of the spot called Avi Mukta between the eyebrows and the nose. He manifested himself as half woman and half man in full potency. On seeing the unborn Lord Shiva, a mass of refulgence, the consort of Uma, the omniscient, the creator of everything, famous as Nila Lohita, straight in front of me, I saluted him with great devotion and was highly delighted. I told the Lord, please create various subjects. On hearing my words, the Lord of Lords, Rudra, created many ganas identical with himself. I again told the great Lord Rudra, O Lord, please create those subjects tormented by the fear of birth and death. O foremost among sages, on hearing my words, the merciful Lord Rudra laughed and said thus, O Brahma, I shall not create the subjects tormented by the fear of birth and death. These inauspicious beings are immersed in the ocean of distress by their own actions. In my manifestation in the form of preceptor, I shall lift up these beings immersed in the ocean of distress by conferring on them perfect knowledge. You alone create all the miserable subjects, O Brahma. At my bidding, you will not be bound by illusion. Brahma said, saying this, the Lord, the glorious Shiva, vanished along with his attendants, even as I was watching. <laughs>